Hey everybody, I'm Shayna from EspressoEnglish.net and I'm here with Gabby from GoNaturalEnglish.com and we're recording the second video of our conversational English series. So today we're going to talk a little bit about our experience teaching English in the classroom. I think you'll find um, a lot of interesting stuff that maybe some stories we have to share. Yeah. So Gabby, tell me how long you've been teaching English? Well, I've been teaching English, um, gosh, since about 2002. That was, wow. yeah, that was my first, you know, when I was like five years old. Um, no, <laughs> that, no, joking. That was my first time teaching um, conversational English, uh, tutoring. And I just, I continued with it because I loved it from, from that day. And I've been teaching online now since about 2011. Okay. Yeah. And before that, were you teaching in a classroom or? Yeah. So from about 2005 to 2011, I was teaching in a classroom and I was teaching adults. Actually, I taught in Japan for a while and cool. I was teaching in 2011, I was teaching in a company. So it was like in company training for adult business professionals and um, small classes. Uh, and it was it was different. I've also taught well. I've taught in a lot of different settings, but in a university mm -hmm. and different different like private language schools. So a lot of different places. Got it. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of experience. Oh, Way thanks. more than me. <laughs> no. Well, tell me about you. How long have you been teaching online and English and? Well, I was, I guess my teaching started when I was in college. I was okay. a writing tutor. And okay. so I would help people with their papers, basically. Great. And I'd get a lot of international students and they would need some help with the English too. Mm. Um, but I really liked helping people. I think that was mm. just, I loved seeing people have like that light bulb moment where they're like, oh, I understand it now. And yeah. now I can do it better. So rewarding. I feel like I can communicate better. Um, yeah. And so I started actually teaching English in the classroom in Brazil in 2010. Nice. Um, I moved down there to be with my husband and thought, what can I do? I can yeah. teach English. So, yeah, yeah, that's perfect. And then Espresso English started around what Two, year? 2012. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that, you know, we started around the same time and, you know, now you're here and yeah, it's, it's very cool. Um, so. What was your teaching like and what was your classroom like in Brazil? I was teaching adults okay. and um, also small classes, small group classes, usually yeah. maybe four to eight students. Um, and they would usually put me with the intermediate to advanced learners. Okay. Uh, normally they would use a native speaker, native yeah. English speaker for the higher levels. Um, but I really loved working with the students because they were they were fun. Um, they participated a lot in the class, which I love. Right? Yeah. I think we get a lot of energy from that give and take of you know That's teacher my and favorite student. Too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, did you ever have um, like a favorite? student <laughs> can I ask that I know I know we're supposed to love all students equally but did you ever have a, a favorite I did have um, one student who I greatly admired oh. because he came to me he was high beginner okay. and really had a lot of problems with English okay and in fact in his native language of Portuguese he had a speech problem oh wow so pronouncing English words was like even worse yeah but he worked really hard oh. like he overcame that lack of natural talent just yeah. by he did his homework every day he would study extra wow. he would go far beyond you know the minimum and yeah. i think the funniest thing that ever happened with him was um he was farsighted that means mm. that he could see the chalkboard okay or the whiteboard but he couldn't see um like a text Oh, wow. If he didn't have his glasses. Right, okay. Well, sometimes he would forget his glasses. And mm -hmm. then, of course, I couldn't use any of my worksheets. Oh, no. So one day, I was not very, or I had prepared a really great class. And he mm -hmm. came in and said, teacher, I forgot my glasses. And I thought, oh, oh no. great. Well, it's just going to have to be conversation. Yeah. Well, sometimes conversation is difficult when you're pre-intermediate. Mm. So we talked, and I asked him about his weekend and about his work and, you know, everything oh. I could think of. And we were, you know, half an hour into the conversation. I'm thinking, I don't have anything else to talk about. What am I going to do? And I look at him, and I see he has a pocket. And oh. in his pocket, I said, 
are those your glasses? Oh, <laughs> and he said, oh, my look, goodness. it's my glasses. And so he put them on and we finished the class with some worksheets. And was it was funny. so, it was funny, but he made a ton of progress. He was a solid intermediate wow. by the time we finished. That's so. amazing. Did you have uh, any students who particularly inspired you? Yeah, you know, I learned a lot from some of my students. Like I was thinking of one in particular in Japan, one of the, one of the adults in the company where I was teaching. And through talking with him, I found out that in his personal life, his uh, hobby was to play drums. And mm. this is important because in the English class, you know, one thing that um, he was having a lot of trouble with was stress and intonation oh. and like the musicality of English. And so he actually thought of this and he taught me that, like that playing drums actually helped him to understand the musicality of English and like where to put the stress. Because one day I think we were talking about how in English it's so important to put stress on the certain syllable or the certain mm -hmm. word in the sentence. And he was like, oh, it's like playing the drums. It's da 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 or da 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 da. And I was like, yes, exactly, yes. And that was just kind of an interesting moment just to see him apply something he was really passionate about to learning English and that helped a lot and he was just such a sweet sweet student he was really shy but like he would he would speak up um, in when he had something to say it was amazing when he when mm -hmm. he spoke up he was just like wow you just taught me something new so yeah yeah that was that's a student I'll remember, maybe forever. That's a nice breakthrough. Yeah. I think one of the cool things about teaching in a classroom is you see a lot of different learning styles. Yeah. Um, you know, some students learn better with a lot of interaction. Some students learn better if they have the time to kind of quietly study by themselves. Yeah. Um, but you have to teach everyone in a classroom, right? Yeah. Well, now, how about, has there ever been a moment uh, where things didn't go as planned or maybe you made a mistake or like something? I don't know. Mm. Let's go there. Let's <laughs> <laughs> we can't just talk about the good stuff. That's true. <laughs> there have been classes I have been extremely unprepared for and mm. I've had to just improvise things off the top of my head. Yeah. And I don't like that because I like to feel like I'm prepared. Yeah. And I think there's a parallel to English learners actually. Like a lot mm. of English learners, they they want to feel like they know everything and they're ready to say the right things in a conversation. Oh, yeah. But sometimes you have to do it on the fly and yeah. have that ability to like improvise. Oh, um, yeah. And so okay. I always felt really insecure about those classes when I mm. hadn't prepared anything or m the printer didn't work to print oh. the worksheets or whatever it was. But if I could just keep a positive attitude, they actually ended up being really good classes. I bet, that's what I was gonna ask because like they probably turned out really well. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I think I, I hate it when, uh, when a student would ask me a question in class that I didn't really know the answer mm -hmm. to. I didn't really <laughs> feel confident about it and I think that's difficult because, you know, I I want to be able to answer anything, but I'm a human. Like, yeah. I don't know everything, I'll admit it. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes you just have to say, I'll get back to you, I need to check. But I know sometimes the students didn't like that and I felt bad about it, but you know, then you check it and you get back to them and mm -hmm. it's okay. Or I would say, hey, why don't you look that up? And you know, you can report back to us. But yeah, those are the moments that I just felt like, Oh, sorry. They're kind of rough. <laughs> They're kind of rough. So what's your favorite part about teaching online? Oh man, I love that, you know, well in a classroom I would have maximum 15 students. In, mm -hmm. Well, in the US and in Japan the class sizes are quite small, um, at least where I taught. But I love that online I can reach so many people, you know, mm -hmm. my videos and you know, website lessons and whatnot reach a lot of people um, so that's that's really exciting and hearing from those people you know when when you guys send me an email and you're like hi I'm so-and-so from so-and-so country and I'm like wow I yes. want to go there yeah that sounds interesting and um, just having that connection with people pretty much all over the world is super exciting and I think that's what's different from teaching in a classroom yeah, I went to teach in Japan and I, I had that experience, but until now I never you know, got to meet people from all over the world. So yes. that's super exciting. I would say exactly the same thing. Like in addition to just 
purely being able to talk to and teach a lot of students that you know we wouldn't be able to fit in a classroom yeah um, there's just uh, like you said I get emails from all over the world and mm. in some of my courses there's homework and mm. so when students send in their homework um, I get a little insight into their culture or into yeah. their way of thinking and that's just fascinating for me because I love travel. I know you love travel. Yeah. And one of the best parts of traveling is getting exposed to different viewpoints and yeah. learning new things. So, yeah, yeah. we, we love, love teaching online. We love teaching you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's wonderful. I'm glad we could talk a little bit about our classroom experience mm -hmm. and our online experience. And I know we probably both have a lot of stories to share, but we'll continue talking. And I think we're doing another um, episode next week, uh, Friday. That's right. Not about teaching, but um, we're, I think we're going to talk about the holidays that are coming yeah, up. Yeah, there's a holiday coming up in the United States, yeah. and so we're going to chat about some of our favorite holidays and traditions. Yeah, that'll be fun. Awesome. All right, we'll see you guys then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.